Welcome to Healthy Living with Julie. Um, often on the show, whenever I'm cooking, you'll see me using many different Pampered Chef products. Um, I find that they make my life so much easier. They've got some great products. And my friend Denise here happens to be a consultant for them. And so who better to show us how to use these products? So today we're going to be sharing some different recipes for you, healthy of course. Um, starting with, what are we making first, Denise? We are going to, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Um, we are going to do a Greek hummus in our deluxe mm. cooking blender. It's amazing. So super easy to use. Basically, we're going to just pop off that lid. And we've got all the ingredients set aside for the Greek hummus. So we're going to start with the chickpeas. They can just go into the blender. Okay. Yeah, the Deluxe Cooking Blender will make soup. It will make natural nut butters. It will do smoothies. It grinds coffee. It grinds almonds for almond flour. It is absolutely amazing. So we're going to add the navy beans now. I don't own one yet. No, but you definitely should get one. OK, so the navy beans. And then we're going to juice a lemon. So this is our strainer. Um, and it'll catch the seeds and pulp in the top. And basically all we're doing is squeezing out whatever juice we can. That's pretty easy. Yeah. And then it has a couple of features on it for strain and pour. So we're going to leave it on the strain feature. Mm. So that can get poured into there. Thank you. We are going to add one garlic clove, which we've already pressed because I forgot our amazing garlic press at home. We use Julie's and Julie's has nothing on the pampered chef <laughs> garlic press. Because it doesn't take off the peel, right? That's right. Okay, Perfect. so next we are gonna do a tablespoon of sesame seeds. Okay. So that is... Oh, I've never put that in hummus. Measured. Perfect. And then a little bit of salt. And then we're going to add one quarter cup of the reserved chickpea juice. Oh, good idea. And that. Are we is putting it. oil in here as well? Yes, I we think will so. put yeah. oil. Yep. So we're going to use avocado oil. Um, you can also use uh, olive oil as well. Okay, so great two option. tablespoons of that. So you'll notice our spoons are all, they kind of sit flush on the counter, which is really handy if you're pre-measuring your products. Two so of these? Two tablespoons, yep. Okay, and it's that simple. No. no. Oh, yes, maybe we will do, no, the cilantro and, or parsley is going to be the garnish. Okay, so we're turning this knob and go all the way to, um, we are going oh, it's timed. To the grind feature, and I do this all the time. I pass, so then you just hit start. So two two minutes and twenty seconds. Hopefully, we can talk over the blender. There we go. And okay, so this just <laughs> how do I take it out? Oh, okay. And then we. Off so with the blender, how do we know how long and what setting to set it for? So everything actually is pre-programmed on it. So whatever you're um, making, um, it has a pre-program and then you can also set it for um, custom, custom blending as well. So there's a pulse feature and there's a grind feature um, and they are all pre-programmed. So Great. we'll put that into our glazed stoneware bowl, which is safe in the oven, and it's also dishwasher safe. So you want to pour, put that in there. I don't know if you want to use that scoop. The spatulas are something that uh, every kitchen should have because they're amazing. Yeah, they scoop out really well because they're not just flat. Yeah, and they don't, uh, they don't stain. They're dishwasher safe. So it looks like it grinded pretty good, considering <laughs> it was so very loud. So in the meantime, I'm going to just get started on the garnish for the hummus.
There we go. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so this is our quick slice. And this is really cool because it is just that. It slices your vegetables very quickly. So I've kind of pre-cut and washed the cucumbers. Basically, we are putting that. Actually, I'm going to slice them in half. And then just kind of rock it. Nice. And then we're going to cube them so we just turn it sideways. And I'm just going to flatten them. Or if we left them whole, we could always use those too with the hummus. Oh, yeah. You could um, make a pretty little presentation if you were to do the. So I'm just going to dump those right on the. Hummus is great with vegetables. Uh, we've got some pita in the oven that I'll be taking out shortly. Um, some whole grain crackers, great snacks for school. Uh, makes a great appetizer. Yes, hummus is amazing. I could live off hummus. It's quite easy to make. Yep. So I'll leave these ones sliced just to show the, uh, the fact that they can be put on the sides as well. Seedless cucumbers are the best, of course, because they're softer. Um, you don't want to cut anything too, too hard in the quick slice, so it wouldn't be ideal for carrots, but certainly um, cucumber, pickles, And, okay, so we are going to dice the tomatoes. Did the tomatoes go on top of it as well? I didn't put a bowl aside here. Sorry. Is there a glass bowl behind you, beside you? No? Um, That's okay. We will. Actually, we could just cut it right on here. I think with the... Um, just to mix this with so I'm just cubing the tomatoes because the tomatoes again are going to be garnished on the top so we will cube these guys and this is an actual tomato knife that Pampered Chef has um, it's got the little the little teeth on it so it cuts the tomato quite nicely I'm gonna grab the pita. Sure. Okay. So here she's. Oh, that smells good. And how do you want these? Those will just be on the side. On the side. In a second. Yeah. Perfect. This is one of their pans here. Yes, that is again the glazed stoneware, safe in the oven, and will keep your food warm for serving and entertaining. So the tomatoes, and we will do one tablespoon of olive oil. Again, we're going to sub for the avocado oil. And that just goes on top as That'll well. just go on top, yep. And then we're gonna add it, add the feta and parsley, which we've already pre-cut. So this is the parsley, if you wanna throw that on there. And the half a cup of feta we have right to your right there. And just sprinkle Nice little it. container. Sprinkle on top. There we are. And there you have it. Our hummus with some pitas, beautiful. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. back to Healthy Living with Julie and Denise today. Uh, what are we making next, Denise? 
We are going to do a very easy tomato salsa um, using our manual food processor. Uh, if you don't own a manual food processor, I suggest highly that you go and get one. Um, we actually take this camping with us. Uh, it requires no electricity and there are so many uses for it. You can, do, um, you can do baby food, you can make milkshakes, you can do smoothies in it. Oh wow. Uh, and today, like I said, we're going to do the, um, the salsa. Awesome. I didn't even know that and this is mine. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so basically we are just adding all of the ingredients right to the manual food processor. Um, we're going to start with a half a cup of cilantro. And then we're going to throw in, um, we've got the tomatoes divided because we're going to do half of them first. So you can throw the tomatoes in there. Um, we've got one small onion. It looks like a lot of onion. I might take out one chunk just for the sake of not having so much onion in there. And then we have uh, garlic. Okay. And I'm going to add some jalapeno as well. And those have been seeded already and cut you off. You could do a mango salsa. You could do a corn salsa. Oh, yeah. All nice fresh ingredients. Okay. Is so that, that is ready. Yes. Lid goes on top. There's a little lock. Yep. And, and then just pump until everything is broken down. Salsa is so great too. You can put it on eggs. You can put it on different uh, different dishes. For sure. Yep. Okay. How's that looking? Great for snacks. It looks good. We'll add the other tomatoes. Okay. Stoneware bowls. Oops. These are my absolute favorite bowls of all time. That? Oh, did we take that blade off? Oh. So just if the sure. blade pops off the little uh, grid in the middle, you just want to pop it back on. So you're healthy living, you're getting your workout today on your arm. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. All right, and there we go. Just throw it in there, take the blade out. Uh, everything is dishwasher safe in this case, with the exception of the, the pot. This is just okay. a just a wipe, a wipe off. But that is it. There is our salsa. It's a chunky salsa, but Perfect. it's going to taste amazing. There you have it. Can't wait to eat. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some more recipes. Welcome back to Healthy Living with Julie and Denise, our Pampered Chef Consultant. What are we making next? I'm excited. This is like dessert. Okay, so we are going to do a frozen strawberry yogurt bar in our snack bar maker. Um, mm. This is a silicone piece. It includes the lid and this is oven safe, it's dishwasher safe, it's freezer safe. Uh, and it, because of the lid, it's great for transporting if you are sending your children with something for school. Um, so this recipe is very simple. Once again, we are going to use the manual food processor. We're just going to add some strawberries. We are going to dice up the strawberries. And oh. we have to make sure the blade is on there in order for it to turn. So strawberries are done. We chopped them That's so fast. coarsely. And then we are going to add our Greek yogurt. So we're going to use the wet and dry measuring cup. Uh, this is super handy because you can do liquids on this side and then flip it over to do dry ingredients. So you don't have to dirty more than one measuring cup. And this dry side is also perfect for yogurt. It's perfect for sour cream. Anything that you need to uh, to push out, it is especially going... the sticky stuff. I find like with peanut butter, honey. Um, this is definitely by far my favorite measuring cup. I love it because I don't waste any. I don't have to scrape it. It's quite easy. 
and you can set it with the wet stuff at how much you need and then push it out. So you have it set for the full two cups, correct? Yeah, the recipe calls for a two and a quarter cup, but I think I'm going to leave it at the two. So if you are thinking about a snack bar maker, I almost suggest two, and that's only because if you're getting out the ingredients, you might as well make a second batch. Okay, so that's that. We are going to add this to the manual food processor as well. Oh, okay. And I don't want to get it on the blade. And we are adding some honey. Ooh, honey. So I actually have some honey straight from the bees from our producer, Vicky, who actually owns bees of her own. So I think this is like really cool. Yeah, I'm super excited. I love honey. And especially if you know it's coming right from the bees. Yeah, because there's a big difference between unpasteurized and pasteurized Absolutely. honey as well. Okay, so again, we're just going to combine these to mix. And in this case, because the yogurt is a little bit thicker, I'm scraping down the sides. And then we will add the yogurt to the snack bar maker using our little small scoop. And then we can garnish with dried fruit. It goes in the freezer for up to an hour or overnight uh, with the lid and then you're all set. That's wonderful. You yeah. could even eat it just like that as flavored yogurt. Greek oh, yeah. yogurt is a great option um, for a snack. Again, you want to buy the plain and add your own flavoring because a lot of the flavored ones are pretty high in sugar. So making your own toppings is wonderful. You could use anything that you'd like. Okay. All right, so we're gonna use our scoop and scoop that in there. Again, great for ice cream, cookies, yes. Oh, yes. everything. Cookie dough. Meatballs. And yes, meatballs, which I do all the time. Um, it, there are three different sizes, a one tablespoon, a two tablespoon, and a three tablespoon. So that's it, just like that. Those guys will go in. Are we flattening those? Yep. So if you want to grab um, the teal mini spatula. Oh, isn't that cute? Yeah. Is that one of the kids' ones? No, that actually comes with the oh, snack bar maker. Oh, it comes with the pan. Yes, if you get the set, it comes with the snack bar maker. So yeah, those can just be patted down so that they are flat, and then we will garnish with the dried fruit. Are we garnishing before or after they're frozen? No, we before. can do it before. Teamwork. Yes. You can even get your kids involved. Um, it's fun. You know, this would be a really great uh, snack for school. Obviously, no nuts. Is there nuts in here? The, there are no nuts here, no. Perfect. So peanut free. Yep. You want to flatten it so that the wells are completely full. Okay. But it's not a perfect world. It doesn't have to be. Perfect. I don't own one of these yet. They're all going to the same place, so I'm going to mix some yogurt in there. So speaking of frozen, Julie, what it's else are we doing Ice cream today? time. So this one I do own. Um, this is the Pampered Chef ice cream maker. So the bowl itself has already been chilled. You put it into the freezer for about three hours before you make uh, ice cream? For the first time when you buy it, you want to put it in overnight for sure. Overnight? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's been used many times, so it's definitely gone in there. And then this is the lid for it with the timer, and it stirs it. So all you really have to do is put the ingredients in there. Now, because I have you here and you're the professional, <laughs> I know how I tend to use it. Um, how, what do you usually do? 
I will mix my ingredients in, in a measuring cup ahead of time. So typically all it needs is two cups of like a heavy cream. Uh, you can add chocolate milk, you can add whole milk. Uh, it would require sugar, but I'm sure that you could use a sweetener and a little bit of salt. And then you literally just pour, you put your lid on, um, you start the churning, and then you add your ingredients and it makes your ice cream in about 20 minutes. So you put the lid on first and then yep. add the topping? I sure Add do. everything yep. in? Yep. Good, I've been doing it right. That is good. So, of course, I'm not using heavy cream. <laughs> I'm going to be using some coconut milk. Um, so this goes in. There's like a little slot that it goes into and then it locks. Yes. I think you're some there. It's just not off on, it's off on the one side. Yeah, it's off on the one side. There we go. So there we are. But I don't turn it on yet, do I? You can, as long as your ingredients are ready to go, like you're adding... Well, my ingredients are quite easy. <laughs> this is going to be a very easy recipe. Um, there we go. So that's on. So I'm going to be using coconut milk uh, for my recipe. Um, this one I just got from Dollarama. This one I'm not sure where I got it. <laughs> I'm going to use this cute little... Toy Story spatula. Yeah. Because you guys do have an entire line of kids. We do. Uh, that's awesome. If you've never used coconut milk before, it's actually got like the coconut cream on top and then in the bottom is more milk. You can also buy uh, coconut, just the cream as well. Different recipes will call for different. I just use the whole can. Yeah, two to three cups of liquid is, is what is normally required for making sure it churns well. And you can do fancy adult drinks in the ice cream maker as Ooh, well. Oh, I never like thought about that. Margaritas and stuff like that. Hmm. That's interesting. I like it because I like knowing what's going into my ice cream. And you can make it whatever flavor you want as well. Um, sorry, I'm making a mess. Yeah, it's okay. We normally would put that into a measuring <laughs> a measuring cup first, and then we would add this, it. This is why you're the professional, yeah, and this is why you're on the show. Okay. I would have just dumped it before I put the lid on. Yeah. Personally, but, but yeah. yes, measuring cup. And if you're using the liquids, obviously it's going to pour in there a little bit easier, but it's okay. So set your timer to your 20 minutes. Oh, wait, I need protein powder. Yeah, you can add it in there as it starts as well. As it starts? Yeah, yeah. you sure can. So this one is peanut butter cookie because I am oh. a peanut butter fanatic. Yeah. Um, but I also have it in Snickerdoodle, um, Reese's peanut butter cup, um, strawberry shortcake all kinds. So I usually just use a scoop or two to the two cups. And today we're also going to be using a magic ingredient that Denise told me about that I wasn't aware of, which makes this even more exciting. <laughs> um, so apparently if you put just, I know you said just one ounce, right? Yeah. Okay, but you could use more. Um, if you want to do just one ounce of vodka into the ice cream, it helps make it so that it doesn't ice up, I guess? It's, it actually helps it so that the ice cream doesn't freeze rock solid. Because you'll That's notice awesome. if you put the ice cream back into the freezer, it gets so hard that you can barely take it out of the container. Well, the vodka will prevent that from happening and will help to keep the ice cream at a, at a more servable consistency. Oops. So timer. So timer. So you press power, timer. It gives you. Yeah, you just keep pressing timer until, you, until you've until you gotten to your desired. So 20 So how minutes. do I know how long to set it for? Typically 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And it'll just churn it and then it goes into the freezer. You've got your, the lid comes right with it, which is great. And then, I mean, you could pour it into another. Oh yeah, 
little individual you containers can, yes. as well. We have freezer containers specifically for the for ice the ice cream. Maker. Okay, I don't yeah. have those yet. I think yeah. I need those as well. And then the ice cream spade as well is new for the ice cream maker. That's just on the side there. Yeah. yeah. So it fits in perfectly into the ice cream maker. Yeah, because you don't want to scratch it, right? right. Yeah. And then when would you add your toppings? If you wanted to put, say, chocolate chips or something like that, would you put that directly towards the end? Yeah. To towards the end of the 20 minutes? Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. Amazing. Look at that. We've got some appetizers made. We've got some desserts made. I think it's snack time. I hope you guys enjoyed the show today. Take care. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.